our next one. We have the Detroit Lions going on the road to take on the New Orleans Saints. Man, you know, uh, Detroit Lions here. Uh, tough loss, right? Tough loss on Thanksgiving uh, to the Packers. You know, we mentioned before those three fumbles, right? So, like, you know, I, I think uh, the Lions, like, it's it's essential, essential that they are able to kind of keep the ball here. <laughs> You know, the Saints, they, this team has been a little underwhelming a little bit. You know, they I think coming into this NFL season, a lot of, there was a lot of talk about, you know, their schedule, playing in the weak division. A lot of, you know, I know I did, and a lot of other people predicted them to kind of just, like, w- run away a little bit with this division. You know, I, I think this is a team that a lot of people thought, you know, Derek Carr, he was kind of the missing piece here. Like, this team just needed a, you know, somewhat stable quarterback, and Derek Carr kind of fit, fit, fit the bill there, but... You know, he, he hasn't really been playing the best, uh, his best brand of football here. You know, there's been some you know, kind of uh, uh, scuffles, I guess, or misgivings between him and like Olave, you know, the top wideouts. And yeah, the, the, just the makeup of this team just doesn't feel right at the moment. So, and they've lost two in a row, you know, against the Vikings and the Falcons. Um, you know, that being said, like, hey, now, you know, going to the Lions side, the, the Lions are fared well on the road. You know, they, they're 4-1 to on the road while the Saints, you know, this is going to be playing in uh, New Orleans. Saints are just 2-2, two and two, you know, and for a, a team that's supposed to kind of run away with, with the division, like, you know, yeah, being 2-2 two and two at home at, you know, in, at this uh, stage of the season, not the greatest there. So uh, Saints, I, I think this will be the key thing here. Saints have a bottom half run defense, you know, and that really favors this Lions team that really, you know, wants to run it down through your throat, and that really sets up play action, you know, for – uh, Jared Goff and and getting the, the ball out there, so I think that's something to keep an eye out on, you know. And this the Saints secondary though, they're elite, like they're playing really well. You know, we can talk about Honey Badger, but uh, you know, want to Taylor, like this this secondary is really talented. Uh, I believe that they're like uh, one of the top teams in the league in, with regards to interceptions. I think they're second here, so uh, you know that's something to keep an eye on, and for sure is this Saints team if they can get the you know a turnover and interception here and there, make Jared Goff uh, a passer, kind of stop the run game, you know, concentrate on the run game a little bit there, they can certainly you know turn out in this game, and, and, and that can be a recipe for victory for them, and obviously you know moving the ball as much as possible. So all that being said, I think the Lions are just mad. <laughs> I think you know with uh, Ben Johnson, Dan Campbell, I think. You know, good coaching, and this is where coaching kind of matters, is after a loss like that, it's like, all right, how do we bounce back? And I think they can get a bounce back victory here on the road. Uh, Lions are four-point favorites on the road here. I'm just going to pick the money line here. Uh, But, yeah, favoring the Lions, having them winning there uh, in New Orleans. Yeah, I think you make a good point with the Saints' rush defense and what the Lions do best, and it's like, they just need to emphasize that to the nth degree this week, especially after, you know, Goff's fumbles and miscues, you know, last week. And then he had the three picks, the one prior. It's like, let's just cool down. I mean, I, I've actually liked Jared Goff throughout this whole year. And these last two weeks, he's really looked incredibly, you know, pedestrian, foolish. He kind of gives us, you know, reminders of when he was on the Rams and struggling. And it's like, it's kind of cringe, man. It's kind of cringe to watch because you just, you don't like to see a guy who's, I think a really high character guy, a good leader, um, a really good game manager kind of fall back into maybe some of his old habits or old, you know, um, you know, shortcomings and things. So I think as long as they emphasize that run, really take advantage of that, slow the game down, drain clock, you know, rely on the fact that they have a much better roster. They do have a tick better defense as well. It's just like, just cool it down because the last thing you need is golf to kind of force the issue um, maybe he's got an errant throw here, erratic throw there, and you've got Honey Badger back there, you know, ga- ga- you know, gobbling up a couple more picks or something like that. Like that's not the game they want to play this weekend. So, and everything you said about the Saints, like I want to give them a big, you know, a big home victory here. I want to get them, you know, back to even, back at the top of the NFC South. But it's just too hard for me to do, especially with you know how they've played over the last few weeks and this whole year has just felt like very very middling type, you know, performances from them. And um, I just, I don't know what their identity is. I don't know who they are as a football team. I don't know like what David, David, you know, Derek Carr is, you know, these days. I mean, I feel like even in his prime, it was like, well, he's got the numbers, but it never really translated to, you know, playoff, playoff victories, things of that nature. Um, Olave, 
you know, is he, is he going to be able to play this weekend? Just, you know, coming off a concussion, like that's a, that's going to be a huge loss for them, especially how, you know, productive he's been. Um, so for them, it, it would have to be the Alvin Kamara show again. And it's like, you know, I don't know. It, it just feels like uh, whoever comes out of the NFC South this year, um, it's probably going to be like one of those kind of punchline type type teams where they're below 500 and people are just like, well, welcome to the, you know, welcome to the dance and you'll be a first round exit, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think I do have like a bet uh, from the, be- the beginning of this season because, uh, you know, I was looking at this, uh, this NFC South. It's like anybody could win it. And I, I think I picked the, the Bucks. You know, kind of as a you know a side bet here, just like a low amount there, because the odds are pretty good for them to, or or the the, the payout was going to be pretty good. It was like four four x or something like that. So I don't know. I'm like, yeah, anybody can still win this division. I think uh, the I think believe it's the Falcons are ahead right now. Uh, last time I checked. So, uh, but yeah, it's like anybody can still win this, and I think it's going to go probably till you know the last week of the season with regards to every kind of you know, takes that, that one playoff spot and, you know, who knows what can happen in the playoffs, but yeah, whoever kind of comes in, they're going to have a lot of question marks. It's definitely going to be one of those, wait, do you belong here? Like, do you seriously belong here? Uh, maybe not, but I don't know. That's, that's the NFL. That's how things are structured here. And yeah, kind of disappointing with how the saints have been playing and, you know, David, David Carr's turn out here. Cause you know, yeah, this is a, you know, on paper, at least a talented team, but they just haven't played that way, you know? So Yeah. Uh, the Lions, though, yeah, I think they get a bounce back win here for sure. Yeah, with all of this, it just makes me, you know, reminded of the fact that you know we should really in pro sports just blow up all these divisions. What's the point? <laughs> There's no point. Just reward the top seven teams from every conference. Like, I get it if you want to represent teams from different regions and you know, maybe teams that are more small market getting an opportunity to to play inside the you know the playoff system and things like that, but. I feel like there's a lot of parity across the pro sports now where, you know, just the way that, uh, you know, payrolls are structured and, you know, revenue sharing goes and luxury taxes go. It's like, there's chances for everybody to make it in. Like, let's just get the best teams in there. Yeah. And I get it. It's like this balance, I think, between, you know, trying to develop uh, rivalries, right? You know, the, the whole idea of divisional rivals and stuff, but it's like, I, know, I think at this time now, you know, it's been like a hundred years of football and stuff. It's like, all right, I think some rivalries have been established and maybe we can continue on with some of those. But then, you know, from a playoff standpoint, yeah, let's let's see which teams have had the most victories. And, you know, yeah, let's 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 have that play in as a factor. Um, and then, yeah, maybe there's like one or two teams out there that the, you know, a certain team can just play like on a continual basis and kind of keep the rivalry like, you know, Bears, Packers, right? Something like that. So. Uh, you know, it's like, yeah. And, and then going between, I think, AFC, NFC thing, uh, teams a little bit more, I think that could be interesting as well. So yeah, just something to think about out there. But yeah, you know, like from a quality standpoint, uh, whoever comes out of this division is going to be, you know, blood in their eyes uh, and, and you know, have, have a makeshift uh, type of, you know, team, I feel like compared to some other ones. And yeah, just just a lot of disappointment in terms of overall quality football. But I get it. It's business. And I think that's what their whole thing is to just trying to get, you know, some regional representation out there. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think all this football fans just want good football. So, yeah. <laughs>